Hello everyone. In this video we will get started with all data model v4 in UI5. For this section I have created a small cap application and you can find the source code here for the initial application in the repository for this series. And if you go to section 10 here you will see the initial application so you can either clone or download this code. And let's open two terminals. First, we have to start our cap application, which will serve the all data service for us. Here I have two tabs in my terminal and first in the root directory, I will run npm install and then npm start to start our cap application. And we can see our server has started in localhost 4004. Let's open it up and we can see a welcome page sort of like this. We see some service endpoints and let's check the metadata. And I have basically copied the trip pin service from OpenOData v4. So you can see the people endpoints, email types, trips, locations, etc. And we will take a closer look later on. And now under this app folder, we have our UI5 app and we will be doing everything here in this folder. We don't care about the rest and let's go to our second tab in the terminal because we have to leave the cap so the all data service running and here we go into the app folder this time and also run npm install for our ui5 app this time and again npm start to start our ui5 application and now we see a simple list of users here coming from our local all data service here and we have some functionalities which don't work because we will implement as we go and for now all we can see is a list and if we click on one of these users we can see the details the address and the trips information for that user we also have an edit page again does nothing yet and also at the home screen we have this plus button for creating a new user again nothing has been implemented yet and let's also quickly check the source code of our application let's open web app and if we check the view for example the home view we have our table right here inside our icon tab bar which we will use for filtering and we have the people endpoint bound to our table and with some expand statement with status and emails and let's also quickly check the details controller and it's pretty empty we have our object matched handler here at the bottom and we simply get the user id from our navigation and then using the bind element we bind this particular person expanding these navigation properties and the same goes for the edit controller now let's go to our manifest.json file and see how we initialize our model first we have our data source with this relative path since we are using a simple proxy let's open our ui5.yaml file we can see this custom middleware simple proxy and this is our mount path and it's pointing to our all data service which is running locally and nothing interesting here just the data version is set to 4.0 and if we go to our model definition here it's using our main service preload is set to true to speed things up and then we have some settings which we will implement right now before let's go to our UI5 app and open our dev console refresh our page and then we can see two requests first the metadata for our service so you can check it here and then a batch request just to read our users so here we have the people endpoint and the expand query parameter that we set in our XML now let's go back and explore some of the all data v4 settings that we can use and we will start with one named operation mode
So this one is for setting the operation mode for filtering and sorting. But we only have one valid value, which is server. And any other modes, including undefined, will lead to an error. So we have to specify this one. We cannot skip it. And we have to set it to server. Otherwise, when we try to sort or filter any binding, we will get an error. And the next one is a very useful one named auto expand select. And this one determines whether the O data models bindings automatically generate the select and expand query options. So let's see this in action. It's a Boolean one, so let's set it to true. And let's go to home view and I will remove this expand. And now if we check our app and in the payload for the batch request for reading our users, even though we didn't specify any select or expand, we can see the select and the expand statement. Some of them are nested, but we will see this in the next video. So using the binding of our table right here and according to all the bindings we use inside here, both of the select and the expand query parameters are generated automatically. Let's also do the same for our detail and edit page. So let's remove the expand from detail and also edit controller and let our model do it for us. Let's go back to manifest JSON and take a look at our next setting, which is named early requests. And if we set this to true, some of the requests will be made early. And by some of the requests, I mean the metadata, the annotation files, and the security token for our model. So first, let me put false in here, which is the default value. And let's go back to our app, remove this v4 filter. And if we check the flow of our network tab, we have our views loaded, controllers loaded, we have this formatter here, and then we have our metadata. And lastly, the batch request for getting our users. Now, if we set this to true instead, and take a look now, here we can see our metadata request before loading our views, controllers, etc. So this is just to speed things up a little bit. But just a side note, we have to enable the async mode for our application to be able to use this setting. And you can check it here in index.html. And this SAP UI async setting has to be set to true. Let's close this and move on to the next one, which is named group ID. And this one controls the model's batch mode, basically. We have a few predefined values. The first one is $auto, which is the default one. And this one enables the batch mode, so bundles the requests in a batch. And another predefined one is named $direct. And this one disables the batch mode, so we can see our requests more clearly. For example, now we have this nice view instead of just a string. But since batch mode is very, very important for performance reasons, this one is only good for debugging reasons. So let's set this back to auto. And next one we have is HTTP headers. And this is just to add some custom HTTP headers for our requests to our OData model. And let's create a dummy header. Let's say x my custom header. And set the value to my custom value. And we can obviously add more here since this is just a map. And now let's again filter 
our requests and if we check our batch request here for reading the users go to headers and check the request headers all the way down here we can see our newly added custom header and this will be sent for every request for every crowd operation and even the metadata if we check the metadata request we can again see our custom header so if you need some custom logic or any custom authorization header for your backend this one could be very useful next setting we can use is named shared requests shared requests and this one can only be set to true let's set it to true and when set all list bindings for the same resource path will share their data so that it's requested only once but when we set this to true default binding mode becomes one way for our model so we cannot make any changes or updates to our data first let's set this to false which is the default and to demonstrate i will just copy our table here in the home view and just duplicate it remove the id to avoid the duplicate id and save now let's go back to our app we have an error let's see this looks okay see what it's complaining about all right shared requests can only be true so let's remove it and try again so now we have two of the same table in our home page and let's check our network tab here is our batch request and if we check the payload we see one get request and another one for the second table but now if we set this to true since they are both using the same binding our two tables and if we check the batch request now we see only one get request but like i said this binding becomes one way so we cannot make any changes if we use this property we can already see this when we try to navigate to a detail page and we will see that our binding is read only so we cannot make any changes so let's go back and remove that and add the next one which is named update group id which is very similar to our group ID here, but this one will be used for update operations. So not for read operations, but for all the other requests for update, create and delete. If we do not specify an update group ID here, the group ID right here will be used as default. But if we specify our own update group ID, we can have more control over our update operations. And we will see this in action in the upcoming videos. So for now, I will just remove that. And lastly, we have a setting named group properties. And this one is just a bit more complex. Oops, sorry about that. Here, and this one needs to be an object. And this can be used to split our update group IDs. Imagine we have two types of backend requests, one fast and the other slow. We can separate these requests instead of bundling them all together to a single batch so that fast ones can resolve before the slow ones so we don't have to wait for all requests to resolve. So how we could use that is we can have two groups here. Let's name the first one fast group or the fast requests and the value has to be an object with exactly one property which is named submit and this is the submit mode it can either be auto or direct or api again more on this later 
And let's duplicate this for our second group. Let's call this slow group. And then for our update operations, we can specify the group for our requests. So for example, we can get the first one earlier and update our UI while we are also waiting in the background for the slow updates. That would be all for this part. Feel free to check the source code. If you check the controllers, you will see they are basically empty. We have some empty event handlers and we will fill these as we go. That would be all for this video and see you in the next one.